Hello, welcome back to the Code Circus. Today we are going to discuss how to access some items in a list. Uh, it turns out many of the things we're going to talk about today apply to the other collection systems inside of Python. So it's a pretty important lesson. The first thing that I want to look at, let's dive right in, is the in operator and the not in operator. So if I create a list up here, say the list equals, and we're just going to do apple, cherry, and banana. I can say, I'm going to do a print statement so I can show it on the screen, apple in the list. And this is going to tell me whether or not Apple is in the list. So I'm going to run this. And it says true. Apple is in the list. Now I can also use not in. So if I say orange in the list, we're going to get a false. But if I say orange not in the list, we're going to get a true. So this is really useful for determining whether or not particular values have been included in a list or not in a list. Uh, there are times where you might want to say that you don't want something in a list, that you don't want something included. Let's say the user is entering in a bunch of values for a word cloud. And you want to make sure they're not entering in any of the banned words that should not be in the word cloud. So you'd want to make sure their entry is not in the list. So that would be a good example of that. Uh, we've talked about before how you get to particular values within a list. We just use the indexing. And remember, it starts at zero. So if I want to get to item one in the list, that's actually going to be cherry when I run this. We can see it prints cherry on the screen. But there's some interesting, unique indexing that happens with Python that doesn't happen with some other languages. Like, what if I were to put a negative one in here? Like, if you think about that, what does that mean? We're counting backwards. So when you run it, we get banana. It turns out the list starts backwards and going backwards to the list. So if this is zero, negative one would circle back around the banana. So negative two should be cherry. And there we go. So that's kind of interesting. We can put in um, a negative value. Now the other thing we can do, and I'm going to add a couple more items in here, just to make it a little bit longer. Orange, um, pear, let me see, how about strawberry? Okay. We can do what's called a range. Now, a range is useful in many other places. We actually saw it when we did strings. Remember, we used the, the structure where we put a start and we put an end. So we can now print out the list from 2 to 5. So that's going to give me banana, orange, and strawberry. Now, you might say, wait, what is 2 to 5? Well, it's 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 where 5 actually turns out to be the length of the list. I could do 0 through 4, and that's going to stop and only give me banana and orange. Because remember, range goes from the starting point to 1 less than the ending point. I can also leave some of these blank. If I take out the 2, it's going to give me everything up through up to, excuse me, index number 4. So it's going to give me index 0, 1, 2, and 3, but not including 4. So we can leave that first one blank. We can also do the other way. I can go 2 all the way through to the end. So it'll give me banana, orange, and strawberry. So it gives me the start at 2 and all the way through to the end. We can also use those negative numbers again. So for example, if I do negative 4 to negative 1, 
that gives me cherry, banana, and orange. So let's think about what that means. If this is zero, then this would be negative one, negative two, negative three, negative four. So it starts at negative four and is gonna go to negative one. So negative one would be banana. So it goes zero, negative one, and stops right there. So we're really gonna talk about these three words. This is negative four. Strawberry is negative one, so we're not gonna include the negative one. So this is a little strange to get used to, um, but <laughs> it, is, it is kind of interesting. We can also change items in a list, like we saw um, in, in the previous lesson. We could do something simple as saying the list, um, let's say index number one is equal to happy. And then we print out the list. I'm just gonna print out the whole list, clear this. We don't need that print statement. And we can see that now we have assigned the value of happy to index one. We can also use ranges to change multiple values of the list. So let's say I'm gonna say the list indexed from one to three. So that would be indexes one and two that we're gonna change. And then I have to put in the matching values that I'm going to change. One. Two. If I don't have enough in there, then, um, in other words, if I insert more items than I'm replacing, the new items will be inserted where you specified, and the remaining items will be moved accordingly. So this doesn't just erase anything. We'll do that in a second. It can actually add in things into your list. So we run this and now we got, um, oh I didn't print it out. Print the list. Okay, now we'll run it. And we can see that we've now switched out happy and banana with one and two. If I want to add in more items into my list, let's say I only go from one to two and I say one and two, Now it does apple one, because one is the only index that I'm actually allowed to replace according to this range, and then it inserts two and shifts banana, orange, and strawberry over to the right. So that gives me the ability to add and to insert into the list. So if I want to insert a whole bunch of things into the middle of a list, I can do that just using these ranges, and if it's uh, equal to, the same size, then it's going to do a replace. If it's not equal to the same size, then it's going to do an insert. I can also use ranges to, let's say, let's say I want to change index one and two, but I'm going to replace them with just one item. this, don't need this, don't need this, we just want to see the one thing happen. Let me clear out the screen. So now, instead of having items one and two, which are cherry and banana, we've replaced cherry and ba banana with just item. So it has now actually truncated the list. We've talked about other methods that we can use. We can use insert, um, to do that, we've talked about remove, and we've talked about all those different built-in methods that exist within our list. But sometimes the, the ranges using those tools could be really helpful, especially um, if we're just using some kind of for loop or some kind of indexing. It allows us to manipulate the list pretty quickly. So the last thing I want to talk about is this idea of pop and the idea of push. We can create a uh, item in a list and keep adding items to the list, kind of like you would a Pez dispenser. And that idea is what we call a stack. 
And stacks are useful programming structure because it allows you to kind of do first in, last out. And a lot of times, it, rather than just adding things into a list, we want to kind of think about it as adding things um, to the top of the list and then pulling them out. And that is often called a stack. So we can use a method. And let's say the list dot pop. And let's print that out. Let me get rid of this one here. So this is going to do two things. I'm going to print the list again. Actually, let me do this without a print first. So I'm going to print the list before the pop and then print the list after the pop. And I guess we'll also print the pop. We'll do all of that. So the list before the pop is apple, cherry, banana, orange, and strawberry. Then we're going to pop, which takes the strawberry, which in other words was the last thing into the list, out of the list, and keep it. So we're going to print it out. We have the word strawberry printed. And then the new list has the same items it had before, except minus strawberry and is one item shorter. So that's the idea of a stack. The push can be achieved using the append method. So I would say the list dot append. Last item. And then we can print the list again. So a lot of times we'll call that a push. So we've pushed back onto the stack the last item. So we can pop things off the list, and then we can push them back onto the list, much like you would like a stack of papers. So you put all the papers down, and then you just keep putting stuff on top, and then you take stuff off. And that's a, a stack, much like I said, a stack of papers. So that is all we have for today on lists. There's actually more we can do with lists once we start talking about looping structures, but we'll have to hold off on that until we start talking about looping structures. The important thing to realize about lists is that a lot of the things that are true for lists are going to also be true for the other collections. We're still going to be able to use ranges. Uh, some of the methods will be similar, and some of the ideas will be similar. So you're going to see some of these repeated later on. I hope you have a great day. I'll see you next time.